<laughs> Good evening, folks, and welcome to this special edition of An Hour with Bob. We have a special guest with us tonight, a guy I've known for decades, and you have too. He's been on Channel 6 for as long as I can remember, and we're going to go through a little history with this man. His, his name is Ken Bell. How you doing? Bob, great to see you. Thanks for having me. Nice Appreciate to see it. you. Well, the end of an era here? you 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 Hanging up your, your cleats? Uh, how do you want to call it? You know, you? It, was, it was a dream that started when I was a kid, and um, I had a curvature spine, so I could not play sports after Little League, and so I started to be the water boy for the, the junior high team, for the football team, and then I went to the University of Colorado working in the training room on a training scholarship, wow. so it helped pay me. And I hung around the local radio station. I was fascinated with how did that radio have the voice of the announcer calling a game thousands of miles away. How did it get into my radio? Right. And uh, I would listen to it, you know, with uh, my earpiece at night laying in bed. And I thought, what could be better than to be paid for doing something you love to do? No kidding. And so, it's, so it's not a job. It's not a job. It's not a job. No, let's backtrack a little okay. bit. Okay. Where did you come from? Boulder, Colorado. Boulder, Colorado. Grew up in Boulder. Went to Boulder High School. And I went to the University of Colorado. Right. And my first television job was, was in Denver. Denver, Denver, and then, yes. all right. Then Cedar Rapids, Iowa for okay. 13 months, and then Channel 10. I came to Channel 10, 77 to 79, got to work with the great Chris Clark. Chris Clark, Chris my Clark. God, yes. a legend, a legend. Who had the first scheduled sports cast in all of New England. Really? Back in 1959 on Channel 12, 15 minutes. Holy cow. Yeah. TV was just being just in its started. infancy. Right, and then of course Chris, Chris did the simulcast of PC Fryer games, right. radio and TV, which was revolutionary around here. Yeah. Uh, just a so legion of... I'll bet you a lot of the younger crowd doesn't realize you started with Channel 10. Started with here, Channel locally, 10. Here, locally, you started with Channel 10. Yes, exactly. Two with and a half Chris years. Clark. Then I went to Milwaukee for three where I did something called PM Magazine. Which we knew, we know PM Magazine. Uh, uh, they had PM you Magazine had around Matt here. Matt Lauer. Matt Lauer, yeah. yeah. Sheila Martinez. Right. Did a wonderful job here. And then John Sweeney, who oh was an anchor man at 10, jumped over to 6 as the news director and the anchor. And so you he, were friends with him. He called me he up knew and what said, he had. would you like to come back and come to Providence? And I said, well, I, I had an opportunity in Baltimore. Really? Went there and interviewed, but I didn't get the job, right. so we, I, I said, well, let's go back to Providence. I think you did a better. <laughs> yeah, I do, too. Moment. I love I, Providence. Yeah, I, I do. I like Baltimore. I, I, like the, I like down the dock, the, the, the waterfront area. Sure. But, uh, other well, than that. New England's got it all, right? We have right. The, all the, the best pro sports teams, so I've had a wonderful opportunity to cover, you know, the 03 Red Sox when Wakefield gave up the Aaron Boone home run, yep. and there was, you know, devastation. Then the next year, when they win, I was there for the Who's Your Daddy game for Pedro Martinez and the Bloody Sock game, Kurt Schilling in the, at Yankee Stadium. Oh, my Stadium. gosh. I, I think that's one of my favorite moments is when the, the Sox beat the Yankees, finally, after all those years in 04. Right, right. The players Which set went, up the Yeah, the World, World Series, Series when they went on to sweep St. Louis. Right. But all the players' wives are standing on the mound saying, take our picture. We can't believe we're celebrating at Yankee Stadium. It was great. <laughs> And then, of course, the Patriots, you know, right. there for Malcolm Butler when he intercepted the pass. And then this last was that, year. Now, did you honestly think that that was no. even possible we that thought, he was going to throw a ball? We were preparing, you know, for a post-mortem <laughs> right. in the game. Right. I mean, that made absolutely, and it still does, make no absolutely sense. Absolutely it, It's incredible. beyond. Well, one of the interesting things is, is that when Malcolm came off the field, they put him at a little table in front of the media in the yeah. uh, locker room, in the locker, locker room area. And I was the only reporter standing there when Butler came to that table and I started asking him questions and he was just, he couldn't hardly get his wits about him. He couldn't believe what happened. This himself. is right after, right he, after he, made, he made the catch. Then the game ends, they celebrate, he walks off, sits at the table and he's just like stunned. Can't really believe that it's, <laughs> yeah. And we were stunned too, it was amazing. I mean, and they had, they probably had the best running back for the, gaining a yard. Why in, they in, in didn't the give him the We have no clue why they didn't give him the ball. Why are you throwing? Well, I was there with Nick Coit, my weekend guy, who is now becoming the sports director as I'm leaving. But we looked at each other. Why would you throw the ball <laughs> on the one yard line? <laughs> Made no sense. Well, the one thing, the one part of it he had, Carol had right was it, it took everybody by surprise. <laughs> That's the one part of that whole, that whole scenario You're that he exactly had right. right. He said, I think I'll. 
kept these guys off guard and yes. throw the ball when now, they should be giving it to the best running back in, think about in the this, league. Bob. All right, if the Patriots lose that game, are we starting to ask questions about Brady? Are we starting to say, well, has this team got it anymore? This last year, you know, the, the big comeback and they win in overtime. Right. If that doesn't happen, is this like the end for Brady? So just a few plays have decided so much. Changed everything. Changed everything. Yes, made, yeah. made his career. Now it looks like he's going to go on for another three, three to five well, years. He, he, he five seems years. to think he can, until he, he's 46, right? Yeah. He, he seems to think he can play for six more years, right? I don't six know, but I don't know if years. Giselle's going to go for that. No, but. that's <laughs> not going to happen. Well, what do, you, what do you think, before we get into uh, other sports, and other, what do you think of uh, the fact that his, his wife, admitted and now he's mm -hmm. admitted that he's had concussions you think they're going to be watching him you, real close you year? talk to every player bob every one of them has had some injury or something you know they used to call it have your bell rung right you cannot play a physical game with men that size going against each other and hitting helmets without having some concussion problems I and they're think. getting bigger well think about when you started how big was the biggest player in, in, in pro football oh yeah it was nowhere near the size now you've got 350 360 pound linemen. i remember and i correct me if i'm wrong the big the, the first 300 pound player was not um refrigerator perry it was not him. no it was a player for uh kansas city chiefs okay I can't think of the name, but I, I think you're right. Yes. He was the first 300-pound guy. He played for Lenny Dawson, who I love. I love that team. Yes, Otis Taylor, Lenny absolutely. Doyle, Lenny, Lenny Dawson. That was one of my favorite teams at the time. And they, they brought him out. They put him on the field, and they were talking about the first. He was the first 300-pound guy that I, I think. Amazing. Uh, yeah, where the game has come now is incredible. It's, it's absolutely. And, and like you said, these guys, they, they 300 pounds is right. like normal now. That's right. That's a, li that's a small lineman, yeah. uh, a medium-sized lineman. Let me tell you, my favorite, one of my favorite moments in my career was in 1987. Oh. Rick Pitino was coaching the PC Friars. Oh, and yeah. this was a mishmash group of guys. It was, was kind of some misfits in, in a way. Uh, Billy Donovan, yes. who went on to coach at Florida and now is yep. with the Thunder. He, he, he was a point guard. He was a point guard, but yep. he was overweight. He was 25 pounds <laughs> overweight. Patino <laughs> ran him like a deer. All those guys, they were in the best shape of any team in America. Remember they used the three-point shot, too? You had Pop Lewis and others. Right. that yep. They had never had the three-point shot. That was just brand new on the college scene. Right. But it was 1987, Louisville. It was the chance to go to the Final Four. They had lost to Georgetown three times already that right. season. They had to play them to get there. Thompson. Yes, John Thompson. And the Friars surprised him and beat them there. It was stunning. That remains one of my favorite moments because it that was just so the final unlikely. Four? Yes, that put them in they the went final on and four. lost to Syracuse there, but it, just to get there, and of course, Rick Pitino had lost a child. Remember, the, the right. child died during that run. Yeah, how old was that child? Uh, it, it had just been born. Not, I think it was maybe one or two years really? old. Yeah, it was, it was young. So that was very sad, and he had to deal with that along with, you know, the joy of going to the Final Four, and yet, you know, the, the, the up and the, down. Talk about that. Wow. The tremendous heartache that he had. Wow. But the surprise of that, college kids coming together, Yasek Duda is your center. You know, found him in Central <laughs> Falls playing basketball. I mean, yeah, I it was so that. unlikely that all this happened. So, <laughs> hey, it was a fun time. You know what? I, I got a, it's a perfect opportunity to bring on the guy that just walked in. Who the is door. a huge sports fan. He's a big sports fan and better than that he's a big basketball sports fan. In fact I know I'm going to lose the floor here right now. <laughs> Incoming. Hi Bob. It's the Lieutenant Governor of Ken, the state of Rhode great Island. Great to see you. Thank you, you for coming by. Well no I, I heard Appreciate that you, it. Bob told me today that you were going to be here. He suggested I stop by and uh, you know I thought it was a really good idea and we also want to just recognize you too so this is just a little recognition oh, from beautiful. our office, and I, it, it comes with pleasure because uh, all the sports that you've covered, Ken, I appreciate we really, that. you know, Rhode Island Thank has you. done so well having you around all these years. You know, one of the things that has really kept me going, they say, well, how have you gone on for 35 years? I never felt like I ever figured it out, like there was always more to learn, <laughs> always yes. more to do. Oh, yeah. really? That keeps yeah. you going, doesn't yeah. it? Keeps yeah, you going. Yeah, sure. But uh, when I started to shoot my own video about six years ago, and I started getting in touch with what was going on in the high schools in Rhode Island. I love shooting the games because people are so appreciative. They come up and say, thank you for shooting the game. Oh, shooting the kid. This is, this is a gift that we'll have for our kids, you know, from one generation to another. 
but it's fun covering yeah. the local scene because people are so appreciative. And you get multiple games in on that on that football. You know, that's the uh, yeah. How do you do that? Well, we we plot strategy on how the games yeah, are in right. the same area, right. and then we try to get a touchdown here, and we go over here, and so we can get maybe four or five in one night. Yes. So, uh, and I work with a, with a guy I call the Bulldog because he is just so motivated. Really. And he he will routinely get. Five, well, I think in one night he got six games. And I'm saying, how That's did this happen? You know, <laughs> how did you enjoy, as of somebody at home who likes the sports, yes. and you, you really enjoy it, and, and, and because now you have the ability to go backwards, you know, you can see it, and then you can reverse right. it. That's right. right. And you can well, slow mow it. You can slow mow it. Right. So I would be con continuing to do it because I love seeing these young kids play in the state of Rhode Island and uh, having a good time and then having it reported in the news. That's a big deal for the kids and the family. You know, one of the nice things about Rhode Island is the size. Yes. Because when you, right. you can cover a lot of the different areas right. and you're still close enough to the station to get back in time. But it's not like Massachusetts where you've got Western Mass, Western, oh no way God. you can get it's there. Not, it's not happening. Yeah. So this this is really a city state, as we know, and it's great to be able to get to all the outlying areas and be able to cover cover all the high schools. And so I think that's why people were appreciative. We made the effort to go to some of the remote areas, Burrowville. Right. Oh and, yes. Uh, well, that made you re a unique in sports. That gave you yes. an edge, I think. It did. Well, no, I mean, going to every community. That, yeah. we, we took up a little bit from your playbook now. Well, that's what we're doing in our I office, understand. right? That's awesome. On all 39 communities out Beautiful. there and seeing the businesses. So it's the same, you know, getting in the, into the communities as you did is very much appreciated. One of the things that I appreciate about this state, and I, I think it's, uh, I, I, I look at this and I say, we should be ahead of other states because of our size. We should right. be working together. Right. We're able to go to the neighboring town or the neighboring city and we're able to partner with people and uh, get things done. I hope there's more of that coming. It's kind of hard right now in our political climate in the country, but uh, we should be working together. We should be able to make some strides here. Uh, and I think that that's one of the things that sports does. So that's why I love the sports. Right. I, I coached a great deal of AU basketball. I played a lot of ball. I played a lot of baseball. I was on an all-state team in high school. You would have covered me, but I'm a little older than you are probably. <laughs> so you would have covered me at that time, but played baseball. So, But that's the neat thing about sports right. is that right. you bring communities together. Yes. And as the teams assemble, and even you, as you compete against teams, you're building bridges between these communities. And that's really, I think, a big lesson that you taught, that you need to build those bridges. And as you build those bridges, and that's what we're trying to do in the, in the political side, as a mayor, I was a mayor and now a lieutenant governor, yeah. let's build those bridges between the communities and, and good things will happen. Life is a team sport, isn't it? Yes. Your work is right. a team yeah. sport because everybody has something to say about the final product. Yes. When you all work together, something beautiful happens. If one person doesn't make it, well, then everybody kind of suffers. The product suffers. Yeah. And the good ones out there, I'm sure you've met uh, some really good athletes that are really good role models. I mean, I, I love John Wooden. I read all his books. I, I think he's just fabulous in terms of the messages that he delivers. And when I go away on vacation, I, uh, that's what I do. I pick up a book on sports. I nice. pick up a book on leaders, that leadership in sports. And you've met people that way, right? You've met really unbelievable leaders. I think that sports can teach you so much. Yeah. Working with people that you may not, you know, totally agree on everything, right. but you right. have to work for a common goal. Caring for each other. Character. Character Discipline. and work ethic. Work ethic, yes. People who work, you know, who work together to achieve some great things beyond what they thought they could achieve. Yep. And you mixed both, so you were able to go with these, like you said, those national experiences, the, yes. you know, the Red Sox and the other when they were down three games and oh, they came man. back four games, and we were going absolutely crazy yes. as, as sports fans around here. And then you bring it right down to the high school level. So it, 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 it really doesn't matter if you're doing your best, right? You learn stuff from the game. Absolutely. And you learn about working with people in the game, and that's why we really appreciate the fact that you were around all and these years. You know what? Losing teaches a lot, too. I was just yes. going to say You that, learn yeah. a lot. Learn That's a lot where the that. character. That's comes where the character. Oh yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah, and it, to get up off the mat. Right. And keep on keep on plugging. So Johnny Damon is in the dugout getting a glass of water when the Sox are down three, you know, oh three. Yes. To the Yankees, and three games. There were nothing. a couple of media people standing there, and he said, well, "Why is everybody so down?" He said, "We're going to come back and win this game tonight." <laughs> Well, sure enough, they win, <laughs> yes. and they go on and win the next three. And then Pedro said, don't let us win one game, you know. Don't let us win one game. And they did, and, of course, made history with that 0-4. That was 
phenomenal. Right, right. But that, you, made, that made up for the, what, uh, was it 70, yeah, oh, 70, yeah. 76? Well, I was there in 78 when, 78, 78. when uh, you know, Bucky Dent hit the home run. Oh, right? yes. That, oh, we remember that, that one. That, you know, I was oh, had a great day, but then I was in Rutland, Vermont. Oh, were you? Yes, in a bar in Rutland, Vermont. How about that? With a guy with a Yankee outfit on. Oh, and no. Everybody was tearing him apart. Yeah. And then Bucky then hit the three-run homer to put them, the Yankees ahead, and he tortured everybody. Well, then I was there in 86 when the ball went through Buckner's legs down at Shea Stadium. Yes. And I thought, I'm thinking the Red Sox are not going to want to have me back. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I show up, something bad happens. And then the Aaron Boone home run, you know, in 03. 03, uh, yes. That was crushing. That was uh, because tough. that that could have been a could have been a great year, but uh, hey, they made up for it. They've won three cents, went yes. from last to first to, to last again in 2013. Yep. yep. A big poppy was in Rhode Island at the Rhode Island yes. Convention yeah. Center yeah. for the Pro he Joe was, he All was State. In, he was in Batucket a couple of times. He played yeah. in Batucket. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. But he was there for the All State Recently, banquet yes. in June. Right. And uh, fabulous. He what did he a, was? He yeah. had a lot of great things to say, but he said. The the twenty oh the O four series of course was great, but the thirteen series, uh, when they when they won in twenty thirteen was the most meaningful because of what New England was going through right. after the marathon bombings. Correct. And so he said, seeing people pull together, work together, overcome such hardship, that made it all so worthwhile for him. He thought 2013 was the highlight of his career. Yeah, not everybody is really as uh, quality as that, right? But they, but they, right. when they show up, you know they're they're in front of you. That's exactly right. right. Because yes. they're not, they don't all get it. Right. I mean, I, I, one of the things that I did coach on was the AU basketball, and we coached right through the. We were, were at the best tournament in the country down at uh, down at uh, Duke and uh, UNC and uh, North Carolina wow. State. We played against. At that time, it was it was uh, Stadamaya, JJ Redick, those you know, those players all wow. went Division One. We we were in the middle of the pack, but we got invited to that as one of the better teams in the country. Nice. And I still remember an experience. There was a guy named Jared Jack, right? He has an NBA career, right? Yes. And we played that team from Maryland, the very best team in Maryland. And we were this grungy team from Rhode Island that was just <laughs> out there, there playing and playing and shooting. And we were we were right in the game, right to the right to the end, and actually you had a lead with about a minute and a half left to go, and they they beat us, right? But now he could have said, now he's a kid that's going to go to Georgia Tech, right? Right, major major yeah. player, and he and afterwards we had a kid that broke his finger and is at a hospital, so our van was at the hospital, and so the only way to back to our hotel. Uh, we were talk he came over and we talked to one another after the game and what a gentleman he could have played the role of oh well, you know we just had a bad day sure. you guys caught it he said you guys played real good against us very complimentary and then he said let me see if my coach will give you a ride back but now that's a quality kid yes absolutely right? and yet yes. there's other kids that would be like in your face and you know, yeah. all this trash talking and that type of thing even after the fact right so you really do appreciate meeting those people, and that's very. I, that's one example that I have, and you have hundreds. Well, those of those are memories. Right? Those are yeah. memories that yeah. stay with you too. Hundreds of those. Big Poppy, I think, really was. Is there anybody that doesn't like him? Mm. And what he did for the Red Sox, and he was so. What fan he did for friendly. Boston, absolutely. But it's just so fan friendly. You know, I don't think like David Price bothers me a little bit oh. because you don't have to pop off at people. You know, you're not. You're going to get some criticism, but he's also a non-clutch guy. Well, he's pitching better now, which is true, but, but, no uh, but not not in the not, 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 not in the, the playoffs. playoffs. You're right. But remember, the guy's exactly. a Cy Young Award winner, and but yeah. you're, what you're saying is true. Why why does Poppy go this way, and right. then a guy like that go that way, and and not really not provide the example that you need for the young kids that are following? That's, That's right. right. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Pedro Martinez was mm -hmm. a perfect example. Yep. You know, he and and he he was. A great leader in the clubhouse, and he also, uh, I, I remember it was uh, the 04 World Series, and he put caution tape around his locker so the media wouldn't come. You know, it was like, <laughs> stay away from me, stay away from me. It I'm was funny. Well. It became I'm pitching well. a funny pitching thing. Well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing but well. But he had a good sense of humor, really good sense yeah, of humor. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you're doing this show, because I think a number of people are going to see it. Thank you so, so much, much for, yeah, you, yeah, for and, bringing and, you know, this. Yeah, and we, we think of the, the world of you guys, you know, especially when they, we cover the sports and do it so well. and. Um, I hope that you're going to be sticking around Rhode Island. I'm going to be doing. I am. I I'm hope so be because I, mean, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but that's part of what I. We've got to stick. You know, stay in. That's the state. right. I'm not a snowbird. <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't mind if you go to Little Florida. That's okay. Right. But we want to make sure you're anchored here because sure. you've got a lot to share with I us. I got a couple of kids, and I'm also uh, who have their own families now, which is wonderful. 
who uh, I remember you at McCoy Stadium with many times. Right? And they were real small. When they were yeah. kids, yeah. And Mondor, one of my heroes. Mine in life. too. Yeah. yeah. But um, I'm going to do a little fill in at six yep. because we have a two man team when the other stations have three. So right. I'm going to help out a little bit from time to time. But it's, as, as I like to say, I felt like I was driving the bus for most of my career, you know, putting everything on the bus and going. Right. Now I feel like I'm chasing the bus. So <laughs> <laughs> when you get to that point, it's like, Time. It's time. time. It's time. Well, it's great that yeah. you're going to be hanging around here. God bless you. Thanks we kind a lot. Of thanks, for your, thanks for your service to the state. You bet. Really okay. appreciate it. All right, Bob, thanks for having me on yeah. board again. <laughs> <laughs> this is just wonderful. Now, can I leave? Go I ahead. I my you golfing can, attire you can go. on. Yeah, here, you, you, know? you, you yeah. Yeah. But he, that's he okay. Like he's golfing. <laughs> All right. All right. See you later. Thanks a lot. Enjoy. Take care, Lieutenant Governor. Okay. That's good. Thank you for that. That was that was nice. Well, let me see what he said here. What did he what did he say? The state of Rhode Island, Office of the Lieutenant Governor. And Providence Plantations. Citation. Be it known that I, Daniel J. McKee, Lieutenant Governor of the State of Rhode Island, proudly extend my personal gratitude to Ken Bell, sportscaster for ABC6, in recognition of 35 years of dedication, service, dedicated service, July 31st, 2017, your last day, right? It's the last day, yes. On behalf of Can all you? Rhode Islanders. Can you imagine? I've been wearing a microphone for 48 years. Don't you think that's enough? That's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. That's yeah, uh, so fortunate. 18 years old, had my first radio job. Wow. So it's uh, it's been a been a wonderful career. And like I I always say, I, I've worked in the toy department because we don't deal with the major problems that news right. has. Right. You don't have to. Yeah, I don't, don't have the crime and everything. Right, I mean, yeah. you, you don't have, have to knock at somebody's it's door and ask them what happened on the murder or that the killing or difficult. your kid gets stabbed or yeah. something like that. No. I'm not that kind of a person. I can't. I do couldn't that. do it. No, could never do stuff like that. And sports moves. It's full of action. It's full of athletes right. who have great stories, overcoming the odds. That's my. Those are my favorite stories. Those that have overcome so many difficult things to be able to, to succeed. Right, right. Hey, I got a little story for you. A sports story. I had. Uh, I do the Toys for Tots show. Yeah, every I had, year at the Warwick Mall. It's beautiful. Absolutely. And somebody was so impressed. I'm a, I was always a big Baltimore Oriole fan by the way. And Boog I, Powell. Boog Powell. Yeah. Boog Powell wrote Brooks me. Brooks Robinson. Somebody told Boog Powell that I was a big Orioles fan. He wrote, he had a picture. He gave my friend the picture. He wrote on the picture to the biggest Oriole fan in, in Rhode Island. How about that? From Boog Powell. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I interviewed Frank Robinson. I interviewed Brooks Robinson. A long interview. I interviewed, uh, uh, Cal Ripken when he was going through a streak. Okay. I, I Jim Palmer was there, of course. Oh, Jim Palmer, yeah. one of my favorite players. Think about these guys back then, oh, the pitchers back phenomenal. then. Yes. They pitched nine innings. Right. It's not pitching six innings and getting a win. That's I mean, you, you pitch, these guys pitched nine innings. Sure. And, and if they didn't pitch nine, they pitched eight and two thirds, or yes. eight, eight and one third. Now you're lucky to get five innings out of a guy or six. And they're heroes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how many guys have a complete game? And how Seven. often do, the, do right. they have a complete game? Chris Sale. We, a couple oh, he's of, phenomenal. Isn't he's, he amazing? Yeah, he is. But you're right. It's rare. Very it, yeah, rare. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these guys pitch 275 innings a game. I mean, um, a year. 275 yes. innings, innings a year. These, these guys today, lucky if they pitch 200. That's right. Yes, and you're on a pitch count. Everything is, you oh, know, A hundred. They got, they got to take them out. Right. When did they stop the pitch count? Well, they, they worried about arms and, you know, with the, with the increase in velocity the pitchers are pitching. Right. They worried that that was going to put extra stress on the arms, and so... Uh, I can't remember exactly when they went with the pitch count, but it's been it's been around for a while. But now. I've always said, and correct me if I'm wrong, that it isn't the speed of the ball, it's the movement that makes the difference, that makes you successful. Absolutely, yes. Location and location, location, movement. Location, location, location. Just right. like just real like, estate. Just <laughs> like real estate. Because Bodica, who played for the Orioles, yes. and then was traded to the Red Sox, right. remember who he got traded for? Mm, I don't. Bodica came to the Red Sox, I believe, for Indison. Brady Anderson. The Brady Anderson. Who, uh, who strangely had only hit his best year at Boston, 12 home runs. Then he goes to Baltimore and, and becomes it's a hero. Incredible. Yeah. Well, Power. He, well, that was juice, I think. That, <laughs> that, 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 well, was, yeah. that was juice. There was a lot of juice. Yeah, there was on, a lot right? of juice going on in those right. days, I guess, because <laughs> it didn't even make any sense. Because Baltimore, the field's bigger than Fenway Park. Right. And, and here's the guy hitting home runs. He's a... Uh, an outfield, a center field, a good, a good center field, but he wasn't a home run hitter. No. And all of a sudden, he's hitting 50 home runs. Change of scenery sometimes helps. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, who was your one in sports? Who was who's your favorite athlete you ever? Interviewed? Larry Bird. Good. Larry wow, Bird. That would make sense. When, when I came to Providence, you, you said that very quickly. Yeah. Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, absolutely. And 1977 came to Providence, and the Celtics would play an exhibition game at the Civic Center at that time. So I go to the Civic Center, and there's Larry playing, and he's, he dove for a ball. Now, this is an exhibition game. Right. He only had one way to play. All right. out. All out. All out. Yeah. He and was a working man's player. Absolutely. And I thought when Larry was playing through the 80s there, it was must-see TV for me. You know, uh, all the teams that were – Magic would come in. Right. And you had the Sixers coming in. But it was must-see TV. Yep. It was incredible. You look at this. My phone. I forgot to turn my phone <laughs> off. <laughs> that might be Larry Bird right there. <laughs> Is that Larry? <laughs> And uh, unfortunately, he started to have some uh, bone chips and other things right, in, his, right. in his heels. He played so hard. But uh, no, that, that was a great era for basketball, wasn't it? Oh, The God, athletes yeah. now are phenomenal. Uh, not but only Magic, you had uh, Dr. J. Dr. J. But so now the guys, Dominique, yeah. you know what I don't like about professional basketball is they all travel. <laughs> they all, how, how can somebody go from the top of the key yeah. to the basket and and – maintain the pivot right no it ain't, it's not happening and one be, has become and two now you know and one step now is now two steps yeah yeah no, yeah right. there's no there's no more of the, the, the pivot right and and what happened to the why is it painted in that area why was it originally painted in that area the uh, you mean the free throw area yeah why was it originally painted? what they call it in the paint right? in the paint it, yes isn't that a three second violation yeah, it's supposed to be supposed to yes be, right uh, Shaq never, lived there. Yeah. <laughs> he lived there. Yeah, he set up a house in there. I, people get mad at me when I say he was he was he was the most untalented basketball player yeah. I think that ever lived. He, he all he did was <laughs> stay there, and uh, the guy's seven foot, whatever, tall, sure. and all he had to do was take take the ball and turn around and push everybody out of the way and drop the ball in the yeah, basket. Like a building sitting in there. You know? yeah, yeah, you couldn't move the guy. He's right. 300 and something pounds, right? Yes. These other guys that uh, were Giselle, gazelles con com uh, compared to him, <laughs> I mean, they, he could push them off, off with just a, a little forearm. That's you know? right. Sure. So it was, a, it, and then it, the proof of the pudding was, what, what did he shoot from the foul line? Oh, yeah. He was, he was the absolute worst. The exactly. absolute worst. Exactly. And you're getting paid all that kind of money right. and you can't make, you have trouble <laughs> making 50% of your yeah. shots from the free throw line? Right. I mean, if I was getting paid that kind of, oh, what did Larry Bird shoot from the foul line? Well, 90 something percent? Uh, yes, exactly. It was over 90%. So, yeah. Now, how, how do you think Bird would compare to a, a, a guy like Curry? Well, different positions, but I think that Curry. Well, that's right. You're talking a forward versus a yeah, guard. But, yeah, but um, they both can shoot. And they both can shoot from outside. Right. So that I appreciate. Curry has a lot of skill. I'm, right. I'm impressed with him, right. the way he distributes it. But Larry, his passing was phenomenal. So it's, it's, it's a good comparison between the two. They both had skills that a lot of other people don't have. They have right. that vision, you know, that extra vision of yep. where to throw the pass. Vision. and yeah. Yes. When to take the shot. And Larry was a huge trash talker. So he would tell the guy, all right, here's what I'm going to do. Then he would do it. And score, <laughs> you know. <so laughs> uh, they tell stories all the time. Larry said, "All right, the next time, will you try to stop me, please? Try to stop me." Really? Yeah. yeah. So he was. That uh, was cool in itself. Yeah, yeah, stuff right. like stuff like that was cool. And then the matchup with him and Magic all the time. Phenomenal. East Coast, West Coast. Yes. L.A., Boston, yeah. right? Right. Absolutely. Jack Nicholson in the front row. Yes. You know. Yes. Uh, remember when the Celtics beat? The Lakers in one of the playoff games, they're all yelling, Jack, Jack, and Jack stands up and just waves his hand. You know, he was pretty good about it. <laughs> so in 1986, when the Celtics won, they beat the Houston Rockets to, right. win the, uh, to win the NBA title. That was the last time I can remember that they let the fans come on the, on the floor to celebrate. Right. And I was out there on the floor well, yeah. holding a mic, you know, doing a stand-up, and they were getting pushed around. Yep. Now everybody's off the floor. They can't you know, go as the they floor. celebrate until the end when they let a few fans out. You know, if you remember in 2008 when the Celtics won, KG, Paul Pierce, Ray right. Allen, that group, they, they let you stand out there at the very end. Oh, I and think. I, that was a thrill for me, too, because yep. I was in the locker room as they were spraying the champagne. I remember that. That was good. Actually, I have a clip of that. You do. I have a clip. <laughs> you know, we do have a clip, John. Don't we have a clip? Former heavyweight champion George Foreman. Ken Bell's colorful television career began in 1973 during his senior year in college when he landed a weekend job at KOA in Denver. A lot of football is next. 
1976, Ken took his snappy wardrobe to Cedar Rapids, Iowa to work at WMT. In 1977, Ken got a job at WJAR in Providence. He replaced former Sox star Tony Canigliaro, who was hired by ABC and sent to San Francisco. This year, it's been all no names, really, as... Uh, what was that? <laughs> That's your bionic bow tie. My bionic bow tie. Ken won a New England Emmy for a half-hour special on the America's Cup. The essence of the America's Cup is pretty much the essence of America herself. After two and a half years in Providence, Ken stepped outside sports to co-host a program called PM Magazine at WISN in Milwaukee. In 1982, Ken returned to Providence to become sports director at WLNE. In 1983, Ken began the first expanded Sunday late news sports show in New England called The Sports Locker. Ken's family also became part of his show. That's right. These are my kids. They got a helmet. This is a big night. Listen, let's do this. Let's go get a hot dog, some Cracker Jacks, peanuts, popcorn. Let's go get a stomach ache, shall we? Back to you, Dave. Let's have Dad's night out, all right? We're going to have some fun. In 1986, Ken covered the Sox and Mets in the World Series. Hey, New York, this is the World Series. I mean, in New England, this is big. This is really big. Ken followed the PC Friars all the way to the Final Four in 1987. And welcome to New Orleans and the Final Four fever is gripping the city here. A career highlight came at Yankee Stadium in 2004. The Red Sox win the pennant. In 2007, Ken again enjoyed the opportunity to go to Denver for another Sox World Series title. Red Sox Nation is celebrating here at Coors Field. The Red Sox are world champions again. 2007 was also a magical year for the Celtics. Something like a world championship celebration from the Celtics locker room. After 22 years, they're making the most of it. Wow. Outside the job, Ken has gone on eight mission trips to build houses for the poor in Mexico, the DR, and Honduras. After 36 years of television, the last 26 at ABC6, Ken is still enjoying the privilege of covering sports in New England. Good evening, mission accomplished. Ken Bell, if I recall, you, you got hit with some of the champagne that, that you, you needed the glass. <laughs> now, now they use goggles, right? That's right, exactly. They yeah. didn't back then. Now they're then. prepared, no. But I, I could never understand that, by the way. Why do you take champagne and just pour it all over the place it instead of drinking it? It makes no sense. Yeah, instead of taking well, a glass. Well, you couldn't drink all that or you wouldn't be standing, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So well, I don't drink at all, but I mean. If, I don't if, either. If, so. if, I, if I did, I mean, it, it would make no sense to uh, just take it and shake, shake it and spray it's it. It's a everybody. tradition thing. Yeah. Tradition. Which started when and how, we, we don't know, right? We don't know about we that. We don't know when that We started. had some happy people and they found a way to be happy, I yeah. guess. Well, they, 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 now in the, in the, in the um, race cars, they use milk instead of champagne. That's right. Yes. The Indy 500? Yeah. Drink milk. They, they went to milk. Right. All right. So what other sport, if, if, if not the Celtics, if not uh, football. basketball? Football, football, football is actually my favorite favorite sport. Yeah, that's become the America's yes. number one sport. And baseball used to be. Baseball always was my favorite sport. My dad was a huge Bronco fan because oh, I grew up in the that's right. Denver yeah, area. Sure. So I kind of lived through him and his passion. Yeah. Although, Bob, I had to draw the line because my dad would not speak if they lost. He wouldn't talk for the rest of the day. Cut it out. Yeah, so we were just praying the Broncos would win because my dad wouldn't. <laughs> no, he just, he it took it so hard. Wow. And, but that kind of passion kind of came into me for, for sports. And, uh, and so I have always loved football and now covering the Patriots through these Super Bowl games, through all of this success, through Tom Brady, through Belichick, all the different players. And here's Belichick who takes all these different parts He's that phenomenal. don't quite fit some other place and he brings them together and they, they win. And then, then he gets rid of a pot that everybody goes, what is he doing? Right. What is he getting rid of this Lawyer guy Lawyer Malloy goes to Buffalo. What are you doing? You know, one of our key secondary players goes up there. Of course, Buffalo beats the Patriots badly the first right. time they meet right. and then falls flat. The Patriots go right on and, and they, I, don't, I can't remember if that was a Super Bowl year or not, but uh, all the winning, all the success just stays. It's yeah. amazing. It really? Yeah, is. They, they they get rid of uh, number seventy five. There he goes to uh, Vince, Texas. Vince Wilfork. Vince Wilfork. Yes. And then they get rid of the uh, 
what was it the offensive lineman there the the, the, the yes what's his I, name? I know uh, right I know who you're talking about and and you're, again shocked. you're saying that's Brady one of Brady's key men up yeah. front to, to block for him yeah see you later and it, I'm saying wait a minute he's going to get killed though. but now look at all the players who have gone do you hear any bad things said about the Patriots you don't no because they know when they were here they were put in a spot where they could be best used fit to win you know and they played with some great players I don't hear any complaining when people leave right, the right. organization. Even from guys that, that uh, you, you might think you yes. have. Yes. The, the, the guy that went to, uh, I'm losing track of names here, the guy that went to uh, Denver, as a matter of fact, the defensive player there that they, they got rid of. Wes Welker, the no, offensive player. No, 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 player. no, no. That, he'll come, that was my next one. Yeah. He was an offensive player, the defensive player there, the, um, the uh, defensive uh, safety. Uh, was he a safety or a corner? Oh, yes. Uh, he used I didn't to call like people him. your dog. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, I know exactly liked, who you're I never liked I didn't like him about. when he played for the Patriots. Well, he's, he's kind of on the edge, plays on the edge, a little bit dirty. Right. right. But uh, he, was, he had speed. He was good. Yeah, but when he went, when he must have lost a step or two when he went, when he went to uh, yes. Denver. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't as fast. People going by him. Right. And, and catching balls over his head. Yeah. So you got all these players that have left, and the success remains here. It's crazy. Now, Wes Welker, we'll go back to Wes Welker. I mean, he has a phenomenal year with the yeah. Patriots. And then the next year, they send right. them back in. And it's like, what are you doing? Exactly. Right. But they seem to time it just right when the players yes. kind of outlived his usefulness. And, and when they go to another team, they don't quite have the same success that they had here. Never do. Never I think, do. I think Bill Belichick puts people in the right spot to succeed. And of course, he says, "Do your job. Do your job. Not Don't anybody else's job." Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yep. And and uh, what scares me is the, uh, the 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 kid that they got to replace Wes Welker. He he's phenomenal. Danny Amendola, you're talking no, about? Oh, no, Julian no. Edelman. Edelman. Yes. I mean, the guy is phenomenal. He's only a little guy compared to these huge. We're talking about huge guys. He's sure. only, I say, a little guy. What is he? 180 pounds or something yeah. like that. Right. And he's getting hit by. You know, mostly, obviously, when he's getting hit by a corner, yeah. he's getting hit by uh, somebody his size. But when he gets hit by a linebacker or something, he's getting hit by 280, 300-pound guys. It's remarkable. And, and you, you have to think that some head, head injuries are happening Oh, out there. God. I Just feel so bad for that guy. Yeah, and he exactly. handles the ball so often. Right. And on top of it, he comes over the middle all the time. Yes. So he's really getting clocked. Leaves himself open. You're right. And yeah, it, he's fearless. He's really exactly, curious. but I feel yeah. I feel for that guy because when he's done with his career, uh, yeah. I don't know his you know what his career, what his life's going to be like when, mm -hmm. he, when he's done with that. You know, well, when I first started in the business, we were shooting film, so you'd go out and shoot film, and that's why you wouldn't see a lot of goals because you couldn't shoot the whole hockey game. Right. You only shot the power plays, hoping sure. you'd get a goal. Then you take the film back <laughs> to that's the true. processor. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So you take the film back to the processor, 30 minutes to get it out. Then you have to edit it. You know, cut, yeah, you physically cut it. Cut Physi it. Physically cut it. Put it on the film With chain. With a pair of scissors and, and, yeah. and add it over. Glue it. Glue it. And then put it on the film chain and play it. And now you just take a little card about this big and yeah. you pop SD it in your card. camera. Bring it back in your computer and drop it in and you're edited in no time at all. It's, so it's, uh, What a difference. It's a huge difference. What a difference. Yeah. How, ma how many formats did you go through? Uh, so we had three quarter inch. Well, we inch. had two inch, the big oh two inch tape. God. Then three quarter inch videotape. Then we had a half inch. Then we had digital, and now we're on the cards. That's so it's been uh, it's been interesting. So when you when something big happens and you have to go back through the other formats to find the video, right. it's hard sometimes to get them transferred into a form that you oh, can sure, use. Oh sure, sure. If you can find them. <laughs> I have old tapes from. Way back, you know, sure. I've been doing this 25 years and doing my uh, Bob's Adventure even longer. And I still got tapes in my attic that I haven't. I'm afraid to go up there. How about that? Them. Yeah. Because it would take me forever to find right. certain things. And, and that was tape. Sure. It isn't like now you can go and, and look at each. It can, you can tell where it is. Right. You have to just well, run the tape. We used to have the big trucks, you know, for live shots. Yes. Or satellite yes. feeds. Now we have just a simple backpack that uses cell phone lines that sends a, an HD signal back to the station. If you have five or six cell phone lines in your backpack, you have an HD signal that goes back to the station. No way. It's incredible. You don't even use space anymore. 
You used to have to go off the satellite that. and then come down. Really? Now you can just use this backpack. And it's a lot less expensive than buying a huge truck. Sure, with the, with the big antenna that goes up, right? Exactly, right. So the whole business has changed. It's been an interesting journey. Yeah, really, uh, really amazing. Wow. So Nick Coit, my uh, weekend guy, will be yep. taking over as the new sports director. Right. And he is a hard-charging guy, does a great job. He's uh, terrific, and I, I say he's the best photographer that we have because he has a good sense of what to shoot and how to shoot it, right. good sense of sports. So he's going to do a great job. Yeah. And I have uh, four grandkids, and That's my mom is in to. Colorado. She's 86 wow. and uh, still healthy. I'm thankful for that. But now how old are your bumps. kids now? 33 you, you and had a, 30. a boy and a girl. My daughter's 33. Remember, I yeah. can remember when they were like <laughs> four and five. Right. Right? My daughter is 33, a teacher in East Greenwich, fourth grade. Wow. And my where, where, where? It's at uh, Hannaford. Oh, nice. Hannaford my son Island. went there. To really? Hannaford. Yes. Beautiful. My son Zachary went to Hannaford. Nice. Yeah. Great school. Great school system. Yes. East Greenwich. And then you go to Cole, who's one of the, a blue ribbon school, one of the best in the country. That's right. And it's a public school. Yes. And then my son is 31, and he's at the Social, Social Security Administration in Providence. Uh huh. So uh, he's. Uh, He's helping save the country one person at a time. You know, <laughs> they, they see maybe 250, 300 people in that office, downtown province right, every a day. day. It's amazing. Oh, I'll bet. Yeah. 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 So he's helped me a little bit as I'm getting ready for retirement here. To now, know what, what is to he, do. how is he with sports? He played soccer. He, he uh, loved hockey and soccer. So he played soccer in college. Well, it's the contact sports, Yes, huh? exactly. So we, uh, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed having him play college soccer. So that's always been a favorite game of mine, too. Yep. I love soccer. Um, and not so much the European. I like the... I never get into soccer because yeah. it's, you know... There's so many I leagues and so many teams and so yeah, forth. but not only that, there's no scoring. Yeah, exactly. Well, you appreciate the passing, the beauty of the game, as right, they say. Right, right, right. But when they had the World Cup here, remember, I think it was 94, they had yep. the World Cup yep. at, at Gillette, Foxborough Stadium. That was nuts. phenomenal. That was nuts. The passion of the people, the yes. fans that were there. So you can see why it's the world's game. Well, I remember years ago there was uh, the, the um, I, I think it was uh, Columbia, the Colombian goalie let a goal. Yes, oh, they killed right. him. Yes, they, they did. They killed him. Right. Yeah. And and they just had a, an incident up in in uh, England, didn't they? Just last yes, they week did. or something, didn't they? Well, you get some riots over there. That's they've had some riots. That is serious. Some people that go in just for the purpose of causing a disturbance. It's hard to believe. It is hard yeah, to believe. It's, it's, it's sad. sad. It's sad to Very believe. sad. Yes. Well, getting back to the uh, the, the Toys for Tots, I had uh, a guy come to me that, at my Toys for Tots and give me something uh, that involved the Baltimore Orioles for all I did for kids. Instead nice. of giving something to kids, he gave me something which shocked the heck out of yeah. me. They, I was given a catcher's mitt from the guy... I'll see if you can pull this one up. And we haven't talked about this ahead of time, so I may be putting you on the spot. I got the catches mitt of the 1983 World Series MVP. The 83 World Series MVP. Oh. It was written to me. I still own it. I yeah. still have the catches mitt. It's to Bob Venturini, the biggest Orioles fan in Rhode Island. You got me stumped. The catcher. He was a catcher, right. remember? Right, okay. And, and obviously for the Baltimore Orioles. Right. R.D. Rick Dempsey. Very good. Rick, De you know, I almost said Rick Dempsey, and then I'm thinking, is he, was he a catcher? Yes, he was a catcher. Yes, he was a catcher, yes. How about that? Yep. Yeah. That's I awesome. That do you still cool. have that glove? Oh, huh? I do, absolutely. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. You know, sports can be magical, especially for kids when you're growing up in an area. And for you, the Orioles, to you know, be able to follow them along. I kind of miss the old days when players stayed with teams for a long oh, period that's of time. What so I you liked knew who about everybody that. was. Exactly. Yes. I can't tell you three Red Sox players. Yeah. O other than the second baseman. Uh, yeah, Dustin Pedroia, who's been there the, you know, the longest now, I think. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to follow. Free agents jumping, and it helps your team. Right. But it's hard. It's a scramble then. you got more teams, too, more teams to cover. And you know what so. else I don't like about sports? No, I, I like sports. I mean, I still now, watch Now, see, all right, the truth session's coming the out the here. The truth now. session. All right. What I don't, <laughs> the thing I don't like about 
the sports is part of that free agency is the fact that the teams can load up. Right. And I, I don't think that's fair to the smaller market teams like like well, Golden State war Warriors. Uh, I mean, look at the look at the Red the Sox. The Red Sox and the Yankees, they can afford any player. Right. And so they year after year they're going to be competitive. Golden State and Cleveland, the NBA has evolved into all the stars want to play together. You get four stars and you're going to win. You're going to win. So the Cavaliers were good, but they couldn't match up with the Warriors. Right. Once Too much. Kevin Durant Dur went there, Durant forget made the about world it. of difference. That's it's all right. over. Once Durant went to that team, it was all over. Yes. So the Celtics had a great year. They were fun to watch, and it was a wonderful ride. But you know they're not ever going to beat Cleveland to get into the NBA, right, and right. then they won't beat the Warriors. Right, they had no shot against right. Warriors, but uh, even to get to Cle beat, get by, by Cleveland. What's interesting now is that the Cavaliers are talking about maybe LeBron leaving next year after his, you know, right. he becomes a free right. agent. So if you lose, things become a scramble. You know, you could lose your, your core just right. like that. You lose your audience too. Lose your audience, <laughs> right? Of course, Cleveland's used to losing. Yeah. So I mean, when they won a couple of championships here, it was it was. Uh, it was good for them, good for their psyche. Yeah, but I, I, when, when a team is, you know, goes through the whole season and, and they get near the end, whether it be baseball or yep. basketball especially, they get near, near the end where they're not going to win. They realize they're not going to be in it, so they trade away. They or start sell. unloading all they, their players. They, yeah, they right. clean house. Yes. And it, I, I just think it's unfair. that uh, They should be stuck with the team. They should be stuck with the team they got, yeah. the bad teams and the good teams. And, and not be able to do that because that, that kind of takes away from it. And then you don't Absolutely. have any any teams with players that stay on the team. That's right. Yes. Like I go back to the Orioles, uh, Frank Robinson, Brooks Robinson. He, sure. He was with the Orioles for 23 years. Amazing. And I, when I interviewed him, I said to him, I said, you know, Brooks, I, I'm, I, I can't believe I'm interviewing the greatest third baseman that ever lived. And that people can argue that's the, that's the beauty of sports anyway. People sure. can argue that, but. The fact of the matter is, he won 16 consecutive Golden Gloves, and nobody Remarkable. else did. Remarkable. That's and right. Nobody else did. Sure. And and that's what I said to him. He goes, well, because he said, I said, the greatest third baseman of all. Oh no, there's a lot of great ones there. Mike Schmidt, and this he's going Boyer, and all these other guys. Right. And I said, no, Mike Schmidt won nine Golden Gloves. You won 16. What did you bat in the in the playoffs in the World Series? He's almost a four, 380 hitter or something in playoffs and World Series competition. You know, he's just a phenomenal athlete. You know, what is sad, Bob, is that baseball is tailing off now. The yes. younger generation is not as interested in baseball. Not at all. It's, it's a slow game. And even watch some of these Red Sox games, you're talking four, four and a half hour games right, for yeah. a nine inning game. And I thought they were trying to speed it up with the clock. They yeah. have the clock at AAA. And it's been doing, I, I've never seen it go off. I haven't seen it. Uh, even when it goes off, they don't do anything. No, that's right. But I, I think that it does keep the pace going a little bit. Right. I hope they do something in the major leagues to either install a clock or keep people in the batter's box or keep the pitcher from walking around or cut down on the mound visits or something because right. it's... Well, it's not only the pitchers, though. The, the batters, some of them, uh, I can remember sure. Hargraves. Remember Hargraves played for the Cleveland Indians? Yes. He had all these things that he... <laughs> Like a tick. He used to do about eight different well, things. Well, Nomar. Remember Nomar in the gloves? Yes. And after each pitch, he would get out and... Like, and the like it changed. Yes. Like something happened. Like the, right. the glove loosened up on him or something. Nothing happened. Tom Verducci did a great piece in Sports Illustrated saying that, you know, just an extra five seconds here on this pitch, an extra three seconds here, an extra ten seconds. It all adds up, and that's right. why the games are going so long at well, the sure. end. Sure. Yeah, yeah, when the guy averages four times at bat. That's each right. Each player, four yes. times at bat. On both teams, right? So you get 18 guys or 16 guys. You know, 18 guys. You still have to pitch somebody batting for the pitcher, sure. not the pitcher. Right. You got 18 guys, and they're each doing the two minutes each each time, four times. It, you know, my God, it. <laughs> that's right. I'm here all night. That's, yeah. yeah, that's right. That's why. That's why they're four-hour games. That's right. And and the attention span of the kids today is just not there. No, and uh, lacrosse in the spring is becoming a huge sport for kids because. It's an active sport. Everybody's involved. It's fast paced. There's a little bit of physical contact. Baseball, you could be in right field for two games and never right. see a ball. That's right. Yeah. And I said to my son when he was down in East Greenwich, I bought him a, a racket. I said, We're going to get you into college. Okay. The easiest way to get into college is lacrosse at the time. And that did was he my go? Thought. He no, went? no, he didn't. He didn't continue playing lacrosse. Oh, okay. Sure. But, but I, you even saw it then. Oh, I saw, absolutely saw yeah. it. I absolutely right. saw it when he was in, in junior high school, actually before junior high school. Right. 
I said, this is the best way to get into, easiest way to get into college at the time. And I think it still is. Uh, a fellow by the name of Scott Sheminsky, who coached Hendricken, actually introduced lacrosse to the Interscholastic League. Right. And uh, it was an amazing turnaround. for when, Once they started to see what the game could do, it's just grown leaps and bounds. It's been phenomenal. Well, look, look at Bryant College with, with lacrosse. Yes. Yeah, They're going, nationally ranked. Exactly. Yes. And Brown, you know, they had to, Brown went to the Final Four a right. couple of years ago. That's right. Where the That's coach right. left. So they've, uh, no, there's some great lacrosse here. There, there are really some, we've got the best of everything. We've got good colleges, right. PC, URI, Bryant, Brown. They all offer. Roger us, Williams. Roger Williams. My exactly. alma mater, by the way. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Ah, beautiful. Were you engineering or? Uh, no, political science. Political believe science. It or not. There you go. Oh, brother. It's been an interesting life, hasn't it? <laughs> You're in Rhode Island. In Rhode Island. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. They're well known now, and they've got great athletic facilities down right, there. Right, right. So in Rhode Island College, they do a great job. CCRI. I mean, Rhode Island College is probably the best bang for your buck. I around. think so. It's yes. It's a great school, and it's very inexpensive at comparison to yes. these other schools. It's, it's nuts. Like, where I went to school, it's like forty, forty-five thousand dollars a year, not not including living there. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, crazy. And you know, unfortunately, students come out with such big debt now. It really causes issues early in life of trying to trying to get ahead. Right. Um, you like to see them get through college, but to carry the big debt is tough. And then what what's sad is they'll go to school and they'll take courses, or they'll, they'll go to a particular uh, career that ends up. Paying them thirty thousand a right. year can never even make it up. Yeah. Yes, or, or it'll take them forever the to make it up. Exactly. Right. Whereas they should acclimate themselves or, or look for a, 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 a subject, uh, a course line that's going to get them a career that's going to, you know, pay so for itself. So many jobs these days weren't even invented five years right. ago. Right. That's right. So that's right. computer sciences it's crazy, and, and, and biotech and stuff like that. That's that's what they should be into. It's really wonderful because you have everybody, their minds now are geared toward technology and they advance so quickly and uh, developing things and uh, some of the things that kids can do on computers are mind blowing to right, me. Right, right. Of course, well, I'm an old guy. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but, 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 what's, sad, but what, what, what's sad is, and I've said this so many times, people watch me, they know when I, uh, you know, they go, here he goes again. <laughs> we are 20 eight in math in the world how is the how is, is that the, right? the most powerful country in the world right. ranked 28th in math and 28th in science i better talk to my daughter because she's she teaches math in the elementary school that's really? one of her things so she enjoys that but yeah how does that happen uh other people are more determined i yeah. think other countries oh yeah you get they the, focus the on asians, it the yeah. asians and the Phenomenal. And, the, um, the, and schooling is at the center of everything. Exactly. And they go to school a lot longer than they we do, do here. They do, yes. They go to school longer in the day, and they go to school longer in the year. They don't have 12 weeks off in the summertime. You mean they don't have stuff. a February vacation to go with the Christmas vacation? Yeah, yeah. Vaca yeah. And, 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 and the February to go with the Christmas to right. go with the April. That's it, exactly. Vacation. And then the summer <laughs> vacation. No, the, the Asian kids. You talk to Asian kids oh, when yeah. they go it's, to school. They go to school, go, go to any Asian restaurant and, and see a kid that's working there and ask him what, what he, what's the school life like. Sure. I mean, they overdo it, I think. But I, I do too, yes. But it, they actually send them there. home in the afternoon to, to have dinner and then come back and continue school to 7 o'clock at night. That's remarkable. Yeah. Wow. And, they, and they, I think they go to school on Saturday and they, and they do not get a summer off. They might get a week off or something. I don't think you're going to be elected to office if you run on that platform. No, 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 no. That's a <laughs> little too much. Yeah, that's, that's a, a little, little That's much. a little overdoing it. <laughs> but the school, the school year is too short, and the school day is too short, yes. I think. Yes, right. You know, when you figure in uh, the, the, the time they get to lunch and uh, the time they go to school. Maybe they go to school a little too early in the morning, too, I think. Mm -hmm. If they went to school, and that's what they're... they're I agree with that. Yes. And you'll get waking a awake. kid up at 7 o'clock on almost 6.30 right. in the morning if he's got to take a bus or something to go to school. And if they play sports afterwards, yeah. by the time they get home, do homework, it could be 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, and you're up again the next day. I agree. But we, we're in a situation in Rhode Island where, as you said, you don't have to go too far to go anywhere. Right. right? It isn't like they're getting on a bus and, and, and traveling 40 miles That's to go true. to school. That's true. Yes. You know, they're in, they're in school in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes the most, you know. And it's nice, too, for natural rivalries, you know, towns, 
communities have yeah. natural rivalries, so that's that's nice on the on the sports level. And we have more of it than almost anybody I because think we're so. so small. Yes, we got 39 communities. It's amazing. Lieutenant Governor is big on 39 because there are 39 communities mm -hmm. in the state of Rhode Island, and they all have their own school system. Well, not all of them, but most of them have their own school system. They all have their own government. That's right. They all have their own government, and they all have their own everything else instead of regionalizing. Right. You know, there are. Like uh, L.A. County is bigger than the entire state of Rhode Island. <laughs> Think about that. That's incredible. You know, they have one police chief. Sure. They have one superintendent of schools. We got 39 of them. Yeah. You know? Right. It's just strange. It's a different, di totally a different animal. Well, oh. it's, you know, when I tell people, okay, from Colorado, when I, when I said I was in Rhode Island, they said, oh, Long Island. I've heard of Long Island. Everybody, Everybody says, that. says Oh, does that, that bother yeah. me? Does that <laughs> bother me? I say that all the time. And, and that, that's part of our problem. We are yeah. not promoting our state enough. That I hear that because I do a lot of traveling, and I hear that all the time. When I, from Rhode Island, oh, oh, Long Island, New York, New York. <laughs> Doesn't anybody, the, the Asians and, and the Europeans know better than the Americans do that this is Rhode Island. That's true. Yes. You say that Rhode Island to somebody, they'll know Rhode Island. Exactly. And once people have visited here, they love Rhode Island. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, again, we have everything. That's right. You got, don't, we, we have don't orange have barrels everywhere. We've got everything. Yeah, that's, it's, <laughs> it's the construction state right now. But it's nice the roads are being worked on, and they'll, they'll get them up to speed. Right, right. But I always say we have the best climate in the United States. It's great. We don't have any bad, real bad things that happen here. That's you know, true. Once every 80 years or 60 years, we have a, a bad hurricane. Right. You know, we had 38 hurricane, 54, 54 hurricane. Yep. Were the only real hurricanes that we have. Well, we had some not. Um, you had Hurricane Bob. You had a few along the line that Donna, caused some whatever. Yeah, but trees not, down and yeah, knock down outages, but things for a few days. But right. We, we don't have what they're having now in, oh, the, in the west, incredible. in the southwest. Yeah. We yeah, my home state, Colorado, they've got fires right, going now. Right you know, now. It's a right drought now. conditions. And anything can We uh, never get that. Yeah. yeah. And, and then they got the problem. They were, talk, they were showing it on the news last night with uh, uh, the skiing in. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> up in the mountains, up in uh, Lake Tahoe area, yes. which I love. Oh, God, that's the most beautiful place in, Is in the it? world. I haven't oh, been to Lake beautiful. Tahoe. beautiful. Right. Um, Yosemite National Park, in my opinion, is the most beautiful place in the country. Uh-huh. I mean, the most beautiful place I ever been to, Yosemite National Park. It's, it's spectacular. Well, I love mountain parks. That's for sure. The Rocky Mountain National Park is my favorite. Yes. I grew up in Colorado. Sure. So I go home every summer. I was going to ask and, you that. Uh, and hike 14ers, 14,000 foot mountains. Yes. So yeah, we, yeah, we call it mountains. But isn't it strange that a mountain we have here, Mount Washington, is the biggest mountain we have in right. New England. It's less than 7,000 feet. Yes, the, yet they have had the, the, the highest yes. temp, the highest wind, the wind and the lowest temperature. Amazing, isn't it? Lower than any fourteen thousand miles. So close to the ocean, boy. And what is it? It's the weirdest thing. Yeah, it's it's amazing, and it's a good hike. Oh, Mount Washington is. is a great hike. Yes, yes, it is. I was on. I was it's up challenging. Last year. I, I didn't hike the whole thing because of my <laughs> knee, but I didn't. But but listen, we got to go pretty soon. But we got to uh, show that clip. Well, we did show part of it. We're going to show the rest of that clip okay. of, of uh, Ken Bell and your history your, from yeah. 1977 yeah. to 2007. That's uh, actually the first shot on there, and you'll notice by the coat because the fashions were a little bit different. Yeah. Oh, oh no, never mind the <laughs> shot. The handle. I that love was, the handle. That was 1973. That wow. was KOA when I was first wow. on in Denver. So and how about the bow tie? Yeah, the bow tie, how sure. the bow tie? The bow tie. Remember Irving Garlevine? Yes, I do. Yes, he wore I a do. bow tie. Yes. But wasn't he from here, Irving Garlevine? Yes, he was. Pawtucket, I believe. That's right. Yes. Where we're shooting. And Chris Shankle. Chris Shankle was from Rhode Island. I think he was yeah. from Pawtucket. Yeah. A lot of good people came from this city right here. Absolutely. Uh, you might add. Are you from Pawtucket? I'm from Pawtucket. Yeah, well. <laughs> I'm from Pawtucket. The first host of the Today Show was from Pawtucket. Not, not the Today Show. Um, good Morning America was from Pawtucket. How about that? Yeah. Beautiful. The, the, the first show. And now his name escapes me. Who was it, John? The first he host. He was there for a long time. Dave, uh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, good old what's his name? Yeah, yeah, Dave. No, he was there forever, though. He was from Pawtucket. Yes. Yes. How about that? Moved to Seekonk, I think, but he was from originally from Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Man. A lot of great people came from Pawtucket. And, and uh, uh, the song there, uh, Yankee Doodle Dandy, 
uh, he he was from Pawtucket. He was from Pawtucket too. I, I they made a movie so. out of him. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. right. I believe he was from Pawtucket. Nice. But you're from East Greenwich, great town. I lived there for five five and a half six years. A nice. Great great city. I enjoy it. I love that town. I write a little. Uh, article in the East Greenwich Magazine once a month just on local athletes or whatever and I really enjoy that yes you know longer form I live in a three-minute box you know a three or Dave three and Garrow. a half minute box we done are you trying to say we're all done John Dave Garraway Dave Garraway Dave, Dave Garraway there That's you go the, boy the two of us together we're not much of a you, team we're not we? doing very well <laughs> are we, huh? two sports guys yeah. and, uh, well, you're the sports guy. You're the sports legend. I remember Dave Garraway, though. He was there for a, a, a lot of years. Um, and we've had, you know, the network. The networks were everything. Now it's cable. Right. So yes. everything is splintered off. You don't have the mega stars that you had on back in the yeah, yeah back, back in the, in the day. day. Yeah, just the Walter three Cronkite, networks. Walter Cronkite. You know, one of the he was who lived who lived on in Martha's Vineyard. Yes, my favorite. They had a Revolutionary War series on July 4th, and Cronkite did the narration. Oh, nice. Phenomenal. Oh. It was great. Had the I'm a history voice. buff, so I, had the I greatest. loved it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Loved it. Well, speaking of history, quickly, do we have time to mention that the fact that the, 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 the cause of the Revolutionary War was not the Boston Tea Party? It was nine or ten months earlier, right in Warwick, Rhode Island. What? The burning of the Gatsby. Oh, burning of the Gatsby, sure. W what would make... Britain more mad, burning one of their ships yes. or throwing some tea off their ship. Burning one of their ships, absolutely. Yeah. They burnt it right, right to water level, and that was nine or ten months before the Gatsby. I may be wrong on the date, but it was almost a year or close to a year before. So you're saying Rhode Island is at the center of everything. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Rhode Island started, oh, oh, the Navy, U.S. Navy was started right in East Greenwich. The Kentish Guards, aren't they like the oldest? They're, that's uh, right. They're still inactive since 1760-something. Right. But you look at Town Hall, East Greenwich, there's yes. a plaque on the wall in the front, right on the front, right next to the door, the staircase that goes up, right side of the staircase. Sure. There's a plaque there. The United States Navy I'll began to, right there. I'll check, check that, that out. out. That's amazing. That's right. That's right. And, and Nathan, um, what, the, what the heck's his name? Who was the big general for the... Uh, Nathaniel Green? Nathaniel Green. Yeah. He's from East Greenwich. Yes, I, d I did know that. Right. Yeah. He was instrumental. He was. In the Revolutionary War. Yeah. yeah. All right, I guess we're done, and I'm done spending an hour. You're <laughs> done spending an hour with Bob. Bob, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Great it. to have you. Very God interesting. You. We could do another hour. There you go. Ken Bell, a legend <laughs> in Rhode Island. He's not gone yet, folks. Until next time. See ya. <laughs>